I, I wouldn't boil it that far down. I'll leave a little water in the pot. It's going to be some detail, right? I think the, the outstanding goaltending, active, mobile, at times physical blue line, and then a good spectrum of players, of forwards, the elite skill guys, the heavy guys, lots of intensity. We, I'll go back to what I think this is going to feel like is what I said last yesterday. We, we got into one of those crazy games where we put nine on them and they never quit playing. And they got five on us in a, like the shortest period of time possible. We never quit playing in that game. And I think that's what the, the body of this series is going to look like. There won't be momentum. It may feel like it's, oh, they're going now, but there's not going to be momentum because the puck drops and they're going to go tooth and nail right after it every, every time. So, but that's going to make it really good. This is the series I'd be watching. Like if I was a, a fan, or I'd, I'd watch this series. When you, when you talked earlier, a couple weeks ago, like you had your top six pretty much figured out, then your top nine. Now, do you feel pretty confident going in that you've got the four lines that's ready to go for game one? Yeah, I mean, I've got, I've, I've got that set, but I don't think it'll stay at that. Even, even if, if we stayed completely healthy, you know, it's, there's, there's going to be finding a different look at times, making adjustments to your penalty kill, a different player will come in and out. But we, we've been, since Barkoff came back off injury, um, we, we've been pretty set with our lines. Do you like the way your top six looks with? Yeah. Like, there's, I like where they are, and I, and, and I know there's a place I can go with them real fast. The first adjustment you, you're going to make, you know, and you know why you would make it. So pretty flexible with that. They, these, guys, these guys all have just played with each other, different combinations for two years. So, I, I mean, there's no disruption on our bench when I, when I play around with the lines. One of those guys in the bottom says, oh, Lomberg, just the evolution you've seen from him over the last few years, what do you like the most? And also just with the back half of this last couple weeks, him moving in and out of the line, just how he's been able, how he's handled it after being yeah. an everyday guy last year. Yeah, some, of, some of that movement is that I know him, and I need to see other players that I don't know as well. Steve Lorenz kind of reinvented himself in the back half of the year with his speed and physicality. And then we added Kyle. So I wanted to see those guys, and that's some of that movement. I look at them as a group. They'll all bring something slightly different to the table. Speed and physicality. Uh, but the speed, I think everybody is edgy the game one, right? They're all wound up. Afternoon game, unusual start. So both teams are going to try to play as fast as we can. So Lombos, that's his, that's his calling card. Obviously, you guys clinched a while ago. You didn't know seed and opponent until just a few days ago. But yeah. you've been waiting for game one for a while. Yeah. Kind of a fortuitous break that you get to wake up, have a coffee, and then there's a game at 1230 instead of waiting around all day for it. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd play every game at 1 o'clock, give them the choice, right? And then you can have the game done and edited by the end of the night. <laughs> it's a perfect perfect life, right? Um, yeah, I, not too much time to think. We got a little bit of experience from last year, and, you know, the, before I got here, this team's been in the playoffs for a few years. Clearly, Tampa's got lots of experience on their side. Both teams can be nervous and edgy, but not I – I, I think with both coaches – probably would feel pretty confident about how we're going to look. I mean, I'm not talking about the result, just I've seen us play enough playoff hockey that I know what we look like, and John certainly has seen his team play a lot. Yeah, depth in the playoffs, rolling all the lines is very important. Last year, Anton Lundell with Luce Ryan and Reinhardt was very pivotal in that draw yeah. specifically. This year, Rodriguez comes in for that Reinhardt spot. And Lundell and Mr. Ryan are still doing their thing. How important has that line been, and how more important will it be going into the series? I mean, it's going to be the, I think it seems to be the deciding factor in almost series. Like, the elite players are elite on both sides. There's no advantage to, to one or the other, right? They're just great. And, yeah, those guys are the guys maybe make the one play at the end, so that's why they are great, even, even being checked or... It's the third line. It's the guys that come out third because they're going to play against the top two at some point, and then you need an advantage somewhere in your lineup. So if it's true that the first two lines saw off, then you're looking for that third line advantage. You know, A2 was, had gone from fourth line center to third line left wing last year and, and then moved heavily into our penalty kill, and Anton was rolling into his second year full year in the NHL. He had been scratched in the playoffs the year before, so he was new. 
we all know what now, especially everybody else knows what Sam Reinhart can do to a line and means to them. But Evan's got speed, so I'm going to put a lot of pressure on those guys tomorrow morning. Play what well. You mentioned earlier that this is the, you could watch a series yeah. be the one. Does the fact that you have two world class goalies going head to head be part of that? Well, that's it, eh? Which is awesome because I think, I think in this even season series, so eloquently put, um, I think their save percentage is under nine, both of them head to head. Well, that's not going to hold, right? So that will be a story, right? Both guys are going to play great, I think. That's what we would anticipate. I think it's because there's a great spectrum of what each team can do. We're a pretty good defensive team. Well, we can skate and we can score goals. They can defend, too, whether whether it's the goaltender or their penalty killing. I mean, their penalty killing is in the top ten, so that tells you they can be a pretty good defensive team. Certainly they can do that. They can score goals. They can skate. So, And it can get heavy, too. There's guys that will finish checks. There's, a, there's a, a lot that could happen here on what the series looks. And I think we're going to see all of it. It's going to be five minutes get real heavy, five minutes get real fast. I think it's going to be exciting to sell. Um, speaking of the defense, I mean, what's, what's, what's FHN? Nice. Plug. <laughs> Sweet. And Columbus. It's a baseball team. Baseball team. You're covering it all, brother. Are they paying you too? No. Okay. <laughs> Didn't need to bring that up. But they might be tomorrow. Who knows? Go Flips. Um, ring in Bill. Um, you guys gave up the you, you and Winnipeg tied for fewest goals allowed. Yeah. Um, given up. Just talk a little bit about how the defense for your team has evolved. I mean, to, to, to not only on the penalty kill, but just all you know, five on five. You guys are as tough as anything. I, I think. Well, I think our forwards, our forwards brought back. The, the style of game from the back half of last year in the playoffs. So it was pretty much even. We, I would say we picked up where we left off. But then you have to look at what, what Bill and his staff did. You know, we had lost two defensemen, had two defensemen go to, down to injury, but we, we brought three NHL defensemen into our lineup. The biggest weakness that we had last year was our penalty kill. And Kevin Stenlin and those defensemen have righted that and, and again got it into the top 10. So. A lot of our solid defensive game came from Mika Lekum and Larson and Kulikov coming in, and, and we were able to hold water with the two defensemen that went down. And then we had to re, you know, we had to live it again when when Aaron went down again. So we management brought in some really good defenders, and that and that's what allowed us to survive it. And last one for me, just last year in, in the playoffs, we saw Matthew Kachuk, his star kind of ascend. Um, yeah. You see that in the postseason sometimes, right? Guys just Jimmy Butler from the Heat, Matthew Kachuk of the Panthers. Just, they seem to to get the love thr the, the thrivers, yeah. right? The the energy guys. So what uh, what I would say about that with Matthew though is what you didn't see was he did that this year. He came off that injury and he wasn't right. Like he just couldn't do anything all summer long, so it took him a while to get up to speed. But in the games that were critical for us, either getting out of the, we, we, had, we had three blocks where we didn't play particularly well. Getting out of those blocks, and in between the first and second period and on the bench in the second period at the start of the second period of the last game, just because we could finish first, potentially. He elevated his game in all of those spots. He just wouldn't have been as noticeable because it's not a seven game playoff series and he scores the, you know, the overtime winner and those kind of things. Um, he, he's, He's matured like his game in such a good way, right? Right. I think I think about mid January, early January last year, he stopped taking penalties, except for when his brother came to town. Then it was on. But when if it wasn't Ottawa, he didn't take any penalties, and he's almost continued that. So he he didn't score at the start of the year. People will look at the number at the end and say, well, he didn't have as good a year. He's a much better hockey player for us this year than he was last year, and he's pretty good last year. So I would say if he if yeah if he if he puts up great numbers again it'll just be a continuation if he plays the game that he's playing for us right now he's going to be a better player for us than he was last year in the playoffs but he was certainly it'd be hard to be more dramatic and I'm for it though if he wants to throw that into he's yeah there's no handcuffs on him
How are we booking the tomorrow? Obviously, with the whole building kind of transformed from regular season to playoffs. The energy goes up, 20,000 people. In the yep. building. Players talk about how they look forward to that, how they feed off that, how that kind of changes the game. As a coach, just what does a change in atmosphere do for you and do you and your guys feed off of it all? I think it's more true for us, possibly. It's a theory. Because when you play, you get to burn energy. You get to get out, you know, you're wired. And you just get a hit, get hit, something. You're in the game, and then your focus narrows, and you kind of shut all that out. And we would say that, you know, during the game, you're trying to pick up matchups, you're trying to do a bunch of things, and you do, you you narrow it out. Making the playoffs is hard. And when you look at this, you know, there's a small number of teams on long consecutive year runs. So, and then when you get a little older, and you coach a lot of games, uh, like I'm trying to, uh, what I'm, st I'm stalling right now to phrase this the proper way. Sometimes the regular season can get a little dull, is what I'm trying to say. It's a grinder. It's not in the playoffs. It's all of the good stuff. It, it's like you don't have to eat your vegetables, right? It's just the good stuff that you want, no vegetables, right? But I like vegetables. So you know what I'm talking about. It's Christmas morning, right? Like you don't have to wait to dinner. To, yeah, it's the best. Motivating your team, how am I going to get these guys going tonight? Well, that's done, right? Now I'm just going to make sure I keep them all flying in the same direction. So all of the, maybe the grinding things, the, the pulling teeth, the motivating, scratching guys, all the stuff, the machinations that you got to do to mold the team to get through 82, well, it's done. You're here, and now you get to have some fun. Thank you, everyone. Thanks okay. So See you guys. One more.